Matthew chapter number four from the New King James Version of the Bible, beginning with verse 12. Now, when Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, he departed to Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is by the sea, in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And upon those who sat in the region, and shadow of death, light had gone. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For key verse, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. You may be seated. For a few moments. On today. I want to talk to you from the subject you've been hacked. <laughs> you've been hacked. One of the elements of life that binds us together is the fact at one time or another, we were disconnected from the true power source. And my brothers and my sisters, because of that disconnection, it caused us to be at odds with God. This is confirmed in the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse number 6. When Jesus says to Nicodemus, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And my brothers and my sisters, in order to recognize, in order to be included in the kingdom of God, you must be born again. Due to the fact that we were at odds with God, we found ourselves in a state of being spiritually dead. We must be born again. We must understand that if something is dead, if something is deceased, it means that it has no life. If something that is dead cannot live, nor be revived. Yes, teach, teach. We must be born again. Yes. Understand that we were alive physically, but we were dead in our spirits. Yes. And because we were dead in our spirits, our lives, our thinking, mm -hmm. and our ways were consumed and saturated with darkness. And in order to have life, my brothers and my sisters, Jesus had to supernaturally infiltrate our darkness and be life and bring life to our sin sick souls. We must be born again. My brothers and my sisters, I think that we can all agree yes. that before God invaded our hearts, uh -huh. our lives, and our circumstances, 
the darkness we enjoyed. No doubt. We were faithful to the darkness. Some of us are more faithful, more faithful to the darkness than we are to the light. We were faithful. Sister Millie to the darkness. We were on time to be involved with the darkness. And we were generous givers to maintain, grow, and spread the ministry of our disconnectedness. What you trying to say, Pastor? See, Jasmine, let me, let, me, let me break it down for you. Folk can go to the club. All right. Well. And they can shoot up the club on Saturday night. Uh-huh. But you back there again next Saturday. Yeah. You come to church uh-huh. and somebody says something that you don't like. Uh-huh. I ain't never going back. But see, we were faithful to the darkness. Uh-huh. How do I know? Because we were givers uh-huh. when it came to the darkness. We were faithful givers of our time, our talent. Come on. Yeah, y'all know. We were, we were faithful of our time, what we thought was our talent. And we were generous givers of our treasure. But my brothers and my sisters, we were busy in darkness and in need of the new birth. How about we thank God on today that we are not doing the robot? (laughs) We thank God that he did not leave us in the circumstances that we enjoy. And we truly enjoy being disconnected and dead spiritually. But in the midst of our deadness, God chose us to be his own. He infiltrated our hearts. He infiltrated a heart that was once saturated with darkness. And now, my brothers and my sisters, because Jesus has shown up to our personal Galilee, our hearts have been illuminated by a great light. Tell your neighbor you've been hacked. Tell your other neighbor you've been hacked. So we understand. What it means to be happy. Most of us are worried about our social media accounts being infiltrated by someone other than ourselves. See, we call that person a hacker. When one is hacked, a person uses a computer to gain unauthorized access to data in a system. Are y'all with me? When we are hacked by Jesus, he gains access by his authorization. And his access, Mother Wright, initially, we don't know, has occurred. But once he gains access to Deacon Woods, the Holy Spirit begins to alter the death, changing our focus from sinful things to the things of God, and he sanctifies us by the blood of the Lamb. See, I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in and did a little light from heaven filled my soul. He made my heart love and he wrote my name above and just a little talk with Jesus. Makes it all right? 
see if you were lost and now you are found. You've been hacked. If you are sick and you are now well, you've been hacked. If you were strung out and now you are sold out, you've been hacked. If you've been redeemed, you've been hacked. If you were a praiser, if you were a worshiper, a missionary, a mother, an usher, a deacon, a deaconess, a preacher, you've been hacked. Jesus has purposefully and strategically invaded our very existence for his glory. Jesus has penetrated our hearts. He has removed the darkness from our lives. Thank you, Father. And we, the now that we've been hacked, yes. we can see, mm -hmm. experience, mm -hmm. and be affected by God's great light. Yes. The songwriter simply says, walk in the light. Yes. Beautiful light. Beautiful light. Yes. Caught where the dew drops. Yes. A mercy yes. shine right. Yes. Shine all around us. By day and by night. Give your neighbor a high five and say, Jesus, the light of the world. The darkness that once dominated our lives is now dissipating. And it is going away. Because of the presence, ready, yes. of that great light. Yes. And it is because of a loving, strategic, and purposeful invasion launched by Jesus the Christ. Tell your neighbor, say, you've been hacked. Now we understand, by the reading of this gospel, that the author did not identify himself by name. Mm. However, we understand that the title of this gospel in the earliest existing manuscripts includes the name Matthew. Deacon mm -hmm. Grant, uh -huh. I'm going to talk to you for a moment. In addition to that, the early church fathers, Papias, Irenaeus, and Origen, credited authorship to the apostle Matthew. And the early church unanimously claimed that the apostle Matthew wrote the gospel that bears his name. Amen. Are y'all with me this morning? Amen. Matthew wrote this gospel mm -hmm. as a tool to evangelize unbelieving Jews. And he wrote it also to the Gentiles. Yes, his intent in writing this book was that the people would recognize that Jesus of Nazareth was the Messiah. Yes. He wanted to give convincing proof yes. that Jesus was the messianic king yes. who the Jews were anticipating yeah. and whom the world needs so desperately. Yeah. On today, God wants us to grasp the facts as the matter. When people are living in the darkness of mind, due to being spiritually dead, 
and find themselves insensitive to sin. Jesus, if it be God's will, will place himself in our lives. Sometimes he places himself directly in our lives. And sometimes he places himself in the situations of our lives without us knowing. He invades our being or our situations. My brothers and my sisters, when he invades, he ushers in what the Bible says is a great light. And this great light, I want you to listen to me closely, it gives us spiritual hope. Spiritual life. And spiritual strength. And it causes us to be more sensitive to sin. Somebody missed that. Because you can't be in the great light because I'm a little out. You can't be in the great light if your desire is for him to be savior but not be lord of your life. But it causes us, my brothers and my sisters, to be more sensitive to sin. The great light also restores the life and the health that sin has destroyed. In the words of Pastor John MacArthur, he came not only to reveal the darkness that sin causes, but also to bring the light that overcomes the darkness. In our text, Jesus has been notified. That John the Baptist had been taken into custody All right. by Herod Antipas. Come on now. Herod Antipas, on my Bible means, is one of the sons of Herod the Great. All right. John the Baptist had been thrown into the palace dungeon. For his disapproval of Herod's wickedness. Yes, sir. Yes. See, when Jesus made, I want you, I don't want you to listen to this one. Uh-huh. It's in the text, but you teach. I want you to hear this. Yeah. When Jesus yeah. made his move uh-huh. to Galilee, uh-huh. he wasn't scared. He wasn't scared of heaven. However, listen to me closely. This movement was because of the Jewish leaders, particularly the Pharisees. Are y'all with me? It was not because of Herod, they Because of his relationship with John the Baptist. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, now that they got what they want, uh-huh. they started in jail. They turned their attention to Jesus. Uh-huh. Well, let me make this clear. Jesus wasn't afraid of the Pharisees or the Sadducees either. Amen. So, why did he because the confrontation was going to come. Mm-hmm. It just wasn't time for the confrontation. All right. Are y'all with me? Yeah. So Jesus went to live in Capernaum. Per Matthew 9, verse 9. Deacon Woods, that's where Matthew had his tax service at. <laughs> and per Matthew, this move by Jesus was a fulfillment of Isaiah 9, 
verse 1. Which states, nevertheless, the time of darkness and despair will not go on forever. Yes, sir. The land of Zebulun and Naphtali will be humbled. But there will be a time in the future when Galilee of the Gentiles, which lies along the road, runs between the Jordan and the sea, will be filled with glory. All right. That's Isaiah. All right. See, it is the people in Galilee of the Gentiles, that's what they call it, in Galilee of the Gentiles, who at the time of Jesus' arrival were living and dwelling in spiritual darkness. Amen. They called it the land of the shadow of death. <laughs> All right. Amen. So you got the Savior going to the land of the shadow of death. Remember Slater? Notice he didn't go to church. He didn't go to the Bible college. He didn't go to the seminary. He went to the land of the shadow of death. Why? Because the land of the shadow of death needs life. Galilee of the Gentiles would be enlightened by the arrival and spiritual invasion of Jesus Christ. My brothers and my sisters, on today, even in the midst of the dark places of our lives, and even in the times, Mother Bright, when we dwell in the land of the shadow of death, we know that when Jesus shows up, there will be understanding. When Jesus shows up, he will be our refuge, our strength, and our very present help. When Jesus shows up, there will be peace even in the midst of the storm. When Jesus shows up, there's joy even in the midst of our struggle. When Jesus shows up, everything, everything is going to be all right. But see then, once he arrives in the land of the shadow of death, Sister Rose Frank, he begins to preach. He didn't act like one of them. He didn't listen to the same music they were listening to. He wasn't going to the club with them. But he begins to preach. And he preaches with authority. All right. He would. And his proclamation is a proclamation of certainty. Yeah. Not suggestions, a possibility. Come on. All right. Reverend Slade, I know you're going to like this part. He simply preaches repentance. I say that to him because he preached in a prayer. All right. He simply preaches repentance. Why does he preach repentance? Because the kingdom of God is near. We must understand that the darkness in which people live in and have lived in is a darkness of sin and evil. I don't care how good you were in the midst of the darkness. The darkness is a darkness of sin 
and evil. And let me throw this in parenthetically for those who may not know, goodness does not equal salvation. There's a lot of good folks in hell. But Jesus is saying, even though this great darkness has been upon you, now is the time if you are willing to turn from the darkness and embrace this great light. See, when Jesus comes into our personal Galilee, he wants us to turn from sin and turn to God. When Jesus comes, into our personal Galilee. Uh -huh. He desires for us to change our direction yes. and uh -huh. turn around to a new way. Yeah. God's way. God. When Jesus comes into our personal Galilee, uh -huh. he wants us to change the way we see life mm -hmm. and see things in a new way. Yeah. He wants us to see things through lenses crafted by Almighty God. When Jesus shows up into our personal Galilee, he wants us to change the way we look at sin and embrace the way he looks at righteousness. Amen. To repent, my brothers and my sisters, is to have a total change of heart, a total change of will, and ultimately, a total change of our behavior. With all that stated, what must we do when Jesus, who knows our struggles, purposefully and strategically invades our existence and simply removes the darkness of our lives with the presence of his great light. Yes. I see three things in this text. We have to have a willingness to receive. A willingness to agree and the willingness to change. Number one, by the aid of the Holy Spirit, yeah. when we are hacked by Jesus, we must embrace a willingness to receive what God is saying. Yeah. He or she who has an ear to hear, yeah. let them hear. Yeah. Yeah. Number two, by the aid of the, Spirit, of the Holy Spirit, we must be willing to confess. Mm -hmm. Let me stop there. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what confession is not. Right. Confession is not just telling somebody who I was wrong. Uh -huh. Come on, break it down. I said it was a willingness to agree. Mm -hmm. Confession, my brothers and my sisters, mm -hmm. is a willingness to agree with God that I am wrong. Yeah. Yes. That's it. When we confess our sins, we must come before God and we agree with God that what I am doing, what I am saying, what I am thinking goes against your will and your way. So there must be a willingness by the aid of the Holy Spirit to agree that our logic, our thinking, and our actions are unpleasing to God and contrary to our progress and the progress of the church. Wow. And last but not least, by the aid of the Holy Spirit, we must agree. Amen. That there is a need for change. Mm -hmm. And there will be change by us pushing 
sin away from us yeah. and bringing God and his desired will for our lives close to us. So there must be a willingness to receive. A willingness to agree. And a willingness to change. My brothers and my sisters, no matter what you're going through, Jesus has the power to turn your dark place into an illuminated vessel. You may be struggling with issues and you may just feel like throwing in the towel. But Jesus has the power to turn your dark place into an illuminated vessel. The Bible says the race is not given to the swift nor the battle to the strong but Jesus has the power to turn your dark place into an illuminated vessel you may have been lied on broken talked about humiliated but Jesus still has the power to turn your dark place into an illuminated vessel Somebody may not know him on today and be oblivious to his presence. But let me tell you on today that Jesus has the power yes, to turn your dark place right. into an illuminated vessel. Yes. In him we find direction. Yes. In him we find our purpose. Yes. And in him we find protection. Yes. Because Jesus has the power yes. to turn your dark place yes. into an illuminated vessel. Yes. The songwriter said. My soul was sinking yeah. in a world full of sin. Yeah. But his grace and his mercy, it took me in. Jesus took my feet out of the miry clay and he placed them on a rock to stand. Lee Williams said, oh, what a relief that it is when God rescued me, he loosed my chains. He healed my wounds. He picked me up. He dusted me off. He protects us from the pestilence. He delivers us from the deceiver. He keeps us from our hurt and our harm. He comforts. He surrounds. He maintains. He sustains. And he guides. He strengthens us when we are weak. All the day long, he is a deliverer. When we got needs and when we got wants, he comforts, he protects, he's a true friend, and an all sufficient savior. The songwriter said, There's power, power, wonder working power. There's power in the presence of Jesus. There's comfort. In the touch of Jesus, there's worship at the name of Jesus, and by his stripes we are healed. Tell your neighbor, I'm covered in the blood. Tell depression, I'm covered in the blood. Heartache, I'm covered. Brokenness, I'm covered. Sleep with nights, I'm covered.
my friend. We anoint by head with oil. My cup running over. Soon, but this is mercy. Just follow me because I just read. He connects. He reconnects. He's always first. He never comes last. He's my savior. My Lord. My redeemer. I'm inspired. There's nobody like the Lord. I'm encouraged. There's nobody like the Lord. I'm motivated. I'm focused. I'm strengthened. I'm energized. There's nobody like the Lord. Now that he moved from Nazareth to my personal Galilee, I see a great light. I'm turning from my sin. I'm turning to him. I have my focus. I'm growing stronger. I can endure. See, I got my war clothes on. I'm equipped for battle. I'm dodging the punches. I got my sword. I got my shield. I can take the hits. I can praise him in the midst of the storm. See, I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get motivated when I think about how he set me free. I get happy when I think about how we brought me out. See, you don't know what the Lord has done for me. See, I had a broken heart. Jesus showed up for me. My world was torn apart. Jesus showed up for me. I was empty and full of pain. Jesus showed up just for me. See, he looked beyond my thoughts. He saw my every need. He healed my wounds. He dried my tears. The Holy Spirit fell on me. The Holy Spirit speaks to me. He made me new. He gave me peace. Hope missionary by the church. That's what the Lord has done for me. You've been hacked. You've been hacked. You've been hacked. So what must we do? When Jesus invades our existence simply to remove the darkness. By the aid of the Holy Spirit, we must embrace a willingness to receive. Amen. By the aid of the Holy Spirit, we must have a willingness to agree. And by the aid of the Holy Spirit, my brothers and my sisters, once we've been hacked, we must have a willingness to change. At the cross. At the cross. When I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith that I received my sight. And now I'm happy all the day. God bless you.